for when evil lurks my favorite horror film of the year uh spoiler discussion we're having a special camp we have deleted scenes what's up my good dude how are you man i am doing very well how are you all right man all right and uh, Stephen deleted scenes and then also too she's got a fantastic channel even though um she's pretty much uh wrong when she disagrees with me sin <laughs> of sin's corner you like I was that about ready to thank you for the shout out and then you said that <laughs> good to have you here it's great to be here thank you for inviting me and I want to say it's written and directed by uh, Argentinian uh, uh, Damian Rugna. Yeah. Let's start off with your overall thoughts. You can spoil it; it's all good. What did you got? What did? What did? Let's start with sin. What did you think of when evil lurks? I thought that it put the Exorcist believer to shame. That's what I thought. I had some m minor issues with it, but for the most part, I was very impressed with how effectively it... creepy mm -hmm. and brutal it was and how this film uh differentiates itself from american hollywood type films and that it did not shy away from showing horrific violence against children yeah and i knew it was coming but boy when it happened it really it just still it still struck me yeah just like whoo Deleted scenes. Give give us your spoiler thoughts. Uh, you know, overall, you know, this movie goes there. Um, <laughs> when when Paulie uh, did his uh, out of the theater review, which convinced me to go and seek this movie out, and thank you again, Paulie, for um, um, throwing me into the maelstrom that is when evil works. <laughs> um, <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I I was reminded a lot of like 70s era and 80s era horror movies um the first movie that really came to my mind was the crazies that sense that no one is safe that was that was a thing that was really hardcore in the 70s and 80s is no one is safe in this movie it does not matter who you are and that's what makes this movie scary well but it's a different type of possession film yeah. right yeah and it, one that where evil is spread almost like a virus. Like a contagion. It's a virus, exactly. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that thought is terrifying. And then some of the violence is because this movie's not like your gotcha jump scares violence, which I think we're all just tired of. Mm -hmm. This is like the opposite. This is when the okay. fit hits the shan right here. <laughs> <laughs> story, yeah. guys. Story. Basically... Evil, evil starts on a farm here in rural Argentina. It's very kind of like nondescript. They're not really into the big cities. You know, this is like very rural. This is the this is the landowner, the farming owner guy and his wife. So this the thing about the goat here, it actually reminds me of the movie The Witch. Mm -hmm. You know, with that with that goat. Um, and I thought at first I was wondering, like, what is it about this goat? animal that they could tell something was wrong with it and then i realized it was the dog on eyes <laughs> they had the little vertical slits and when when the moment happens whoosh, mm. that yeah that's when i said okay this movie is going to be something different because i don't i'm not somebody who scares very easily with horror movies you got to get mm. you got to get pretty hardcore you got to do this mm -hmm. they get a rise out of me at a horror movie and when, when that moment happens, that's when, oh, oh this kid, this, this kid, kid is yeah. great. Yeah. He helped really amp up the tension because there was, I, I mentioned in my review that I, that this movie just instilled in me a sense of dread, pretty much mm. like you just know something bad is it's just not going to end well and you're just along for the ride. And this kid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He amps up the tension, you know, when they're the father's trying to figure things out and he's so stressed and the kids making those noises and just the desperation felt so palpable. Oof. I was getting tense. There's two brothers that are the farmhands and we follow them in the film. They're trying to figure out what's going on. They they seem to be always one step behind. 
I don't want to say they're idiots. They're just <laughs> it's just well, frustrating. But it, it's, one of I, his I, sons I, is autistic, and this this um this scene here where they're in the car. Anything, anytime they're in the car, it was incredibly aggravating. Like it just drove me crazy. From Why? him because repeating, the... yeah, oh yeah, the... it was just yeah. so so tense. Yes, mm -hmm. that um, to where he's even repeating the evil ones' names. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and the grandma's right. like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Th that's the thing is that she's mm -hmm. give she's because she's the one who gets the uh, the exposition dump when it comes to uh, um, the rules. Mm -hmm. And then they systematically, immediately start breaking all of those rules. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, I got to tell you, there was a lot of great supporting cast, like the actor. Like, they didn't have a lot of scenes. Yeah. But the scenes they had, oh, they from this crazy. lady to right. the, the ex-wife, Jesus. Did, was it the demon doing that to her so that it could escape? Or was she trying to kill off the demon? What hand was really controlling the axe? Whether it was the human, just trying to end it, but that doesn't that doesn't no. track with well, her not yeah. wanting him to shoot the goat because she knew if her husband shot the goat, it would just manifest. I don't think it was her at that moment. It was no. just the it was because the demon it just seemed so robotic in the yeah. movements, kind of. True, true, true. Yeah, I think at a, at that certain, she stops yelling at him the the evil spread to her as and, soon as the goat got killed and she took him out and then she yeah. then she took herself out which was just frightening man and she's she's pregnant Oof. yep yeah here's the source of of the of the yeah. evil mm -hmm. the the main rot rotted person who is a like an indigenous farm hand that's what i got mm -hmm. um you had him you had the um, the mom yep. and then the other brother and at this point no one's infected yet i thought that was a an extremely disturbing scene disturbing mm. imagery but yet at the same time so like he'd been like he'd been in this situation for a year obviously he didn't start off looking this way but because it just wasn't taken care of and wasn't taken care of he just progressively got worse and worse and worse to the point that a year later he looks like this Mm. That felt very organic and real to me. Really started to creep me out is the fact that the police officer goes into the whole thing of, um, well, we have to follow a protocol. Like, protocol? How many times has this happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, they didn't act super surprised, yeah. though. No, that and was they the were thing. Talking is talking about it, yeah. The demon possession? Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is interesting, what else, right? What else she got? You know? Right. Because uh, in this article that I was reading, it says it's clear from the beginning that there are official government systems for dealing with in in encarnado. Uh, there un there are known problem with known solutions, but the people who should be taking care of the issue are ignoring it because they don't feel any sense of personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. Right? The cops, mm -hmm. <laughs> the sheriff. Yep. All the horror that follows could have been prevented if the people had just done their jobs. When our hero shows up to save, to, you know, to get his kids, he brings evil with him, obviously. Yeah. It's on his clothes. First thing he does is take them off. You got to burn it. Da, 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 and he causes a huge disruption with the ex-wife, yes. her husband, to where they, they're, they're, they're in a heightened state because he's just there. Nothing to do with yeah, the a story. restraining order or something. You're not even supposed right. to be there. <laughs> I think because of their state, they they that invited evil in. You know, boom. Yeah, yeah. They and, got those guys like that. They and got they were the so dog. Focused on the fighting, they never even noticed or heard what was happening mm -hmm. in the other room. Oh, yeah. That's the daughter, and so he had a, he had the two the three kids. Mm -hmm. The daughter and was none, the daughter none of, them, of none the, of them make it right. The daughter was not his child. No, the daughter right. was the uh, um, the second husband's child. No, okay. none of them made it. None, none. Damn. <laughs> like I said, this movie just does not spare you. Yeah. At all. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah. Um, I was okay. hoping at least the son, the young son, would, but nope. No. No, mama got her. Mom, no, mama did the y- La Llorona yep. on her. On yep. him. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That. yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> this is our lead, for lack of better words, played by Ezekiel yeah. Rodriguez, I believe. Looks mm-hmm. like Hugh Jackman. He little Hugh Jackman, James yeah. Purefoy. James Purefoy, yeah. yeah. He was he was really good, but I was a little agitated at some stuff he did at the end that didn't seem consistent with his what his character knew at that point. He'd already been pretty smart or tried to be pretty smart about how to handle certain things. Like he seemed to learn from his mistakes, but then in the very end, he doesn't listen to the expert. Mm-hmm. And he leaves her. <laughs> that's <laughs> one of the other, that's one of the second things that really bothers me obviously it had to happen for purposes of the story but i don't feel like that was a very strongly written moment who was this kid that that he was all bald and bloody who was that i think he was the source of it all he was the he was the one that came out of the fat dude yes oh yeah yeah Yeah, that's that's what i assumed right yeah this is a movie that has like 15 Damien Thorns in it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, oh my God. Oh no, don't hurt God, me. Poor don't poor hurt me. Poor. I'm trying to help you the whole time. Oh, the that mind games. The kid, uh, you know, and the games, mind games yeah. that they play. You know, yeah. this is a guy who was at one point in his life looking to self delete anyway. And maybe the brother too, because the, there's that scene where the brother has the bullet on the table. And I'm like, what are we thinking about doing, pal? So, so there is that sense of you, you have this guy who's separated from his family. He's estranged from them. He doesn't see them. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, he's um, broken, very broken man. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, so, I, I think that clouds his judgment. So, those are some some of the some images. I mean, there's a a lot more. Um, I would say a lot more scenes, a lot more disturbing situations in this film and this incredible film called when evil lurks it is in theaters now it's but i know that it's coming out on shutter i think october 27th so yeah. if you have a subscription to shutter you'll be able to watch it it's a fast-paced movie you know where you're gonna forget stuff it's actually you know very very present in in in, in telling a story without rushing but felt i did miss a lot so i want to go see it again 